the lecture, um, not last, but certainly not least, is by um, both Hendrik uh, Taiban and uh, Li, uh, Ling Fen Chen. And um, the title of the talk is Emerging Public Space Tactics in Hong Kong. Um, Hendrik Taiban is an urban designer, researcher, and educator devoted to the creation of healthy and inclusive cities. We have that common. He's associate professor and associate director of the School of Architecture at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. I think I learned from Margaret, you call it Chinese U now, so I can, that's our short way of saying it, Chinese U. He also heads the master's and the urban design program. Over the last years, he developed a series of public space and placemaking projects to empower local communities. And we just actually saw the cover of, of one of these uh, one of these published projects. Uh, the projects have been featured in international publications and Biennale exhibition. In his current Worldwide Universities Network project, um, Hendrik focuses on the relationship between urban forms health and well-being. And in this context, he initiated with Luisa Bravo of City Space Architecture and founder of the Journal of Public Space, a project that many of us were involved in um, 2020, a year without public space um, under the COVID-19 pandemic. And I believe that's going to be a special issue also of the journal, right, coming up. Um, his co-author and co-researcher is Ling Fen Cheng, who I know as Fen, um, is a, now a postdoctoral fellow at the School of Architecture at China University, Hong Kong. And she is co-author uh, of the chapter, Reflections on Emerging Public Space Design Approaches in Hong Kong, that is being published in the book that I was talking about that is edited um, by Mio Drag and Timothy um, Jackna, which is what this, I guess, the conference is really all celebrating, um, at least as far, or at least some part of this is celebrating. So um, um, I don't know, how are you presenting? Um, um, we, uh, we share uh, half up. You're gonna <laughs> so. share, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Who's gonna? Well, anyhow, it's up to you. You, you. Sure. She's always way ahead of me. I don't. I. I. <laughs> she's always bailing me out of trouble. So I'm sure you'll be fine. So um, thank you so much. Okay. So uh, good morning or good evening, everybody. So uh, basically, we will present together uh, in Chen, who you can also see here, and um, who also was a. PhD student of, of Margaret, right? So, uh, and um, she worked with me together uh, on this paper and, and uh, the second half of the presentation will be by Ing Fen. Um, so you, uh, basically uh, what we are talking about is basically related to this chapter that um, uh, for Mio Drag's, uh book. At that time uh, we were thinking, uh, actually our work's not so much on the kind of regional, uh, big regional state, uh, uh, scale, but really more on uh, very small scale uh, place making interventions. So wait, let me see. Um, so you, I think I probably uh, all of you are quite familiar with the situation in Hong Kong. Uh, I guess uh, uh, no matter if you're in New York uh, or in Hong Kong uh, or in other places. But just to um, to remind all of the, uh, us when we talk about public space that of course Hong Kong is an extremely dense uh, city. And because of the way how people live on a very cramped uh, uh, space, uh, open space, uh, public space has even uh, a very special function for many people that live here, right? Um, we also know that uh, there are certain kind of dominant conditions of, I would say, planned public spaces, because of course we have also a lot of fantastic informal uh, public spaces, but unfortunately the, the planned ones are not all that uh, successful. We have basically kind of two trends. Uh, one is basically the public space in private development. And um, right. um, and there, of course, you have a, a range of uh, qualities. Some are actually not so bad, but some like here basically really uh, uh, kind of chase away everyone <laughs> from, from every opportunity to sit and so on. All those kind of questions that were already also highlighted uh, for public space and private development also in New York in, in old days, right? Uh, the other conditions is, uh, are basically 
government managed public spaces and also there we see a, a range of uh, spaces, but many unfortunately uh, don't go beyond this quality like this space, for example, like sit, sitting out areas um, that's, that are usually designed with very little input by the community. And uh, as you can see on this photo here, people more sit outside of them than inside. So it's kind of a, um, <laughs> kind of a little bit of a sad situation, right? So this was a context in which we usually work here. And um, uh, when we started to work with, with Mirdrug together uh, now over the last uh, uh, probably three years already, right? Um, uh, we were actually quite uh, uh, also fascinated by his uh, um, book on, uh, sorry, um, on designing infrastructures uh, of inclusion. Um, and in this book, he highlighted five domains of international trends, how in, in US, but also in, in Europe and so on, um, different approaches uh, uh, bubbled up basically to, to uh, create uh, new forms of uh, urban practices, but mainly related to also public space uh, from insurgent to more uh, um, other ones that may be more related to institutional uh, and so on, right? I, I have not time to, to go very deep into this, but we were asking us uh, for this kind of chapter when we started to work on this, knowing that we would work uh, also in the context of Mio Drug's work. Um, are there similar trends in Hong Kong? And uh, there, I think that um, there's, What's quite interesting in Hong Kong, there's a whole ecology of those uh, different organizations, and there's probably even much more than those ones, that are working on new forms of um, design, co-design approaches that are a little bit different from the standard, let's say, professional architect uh, uh, um, or urban designer. Uh, on, and, and the production of the public space, right? Um, so, uh, and we are somehow a kind of small part of this ecology. Um, and um, so I will basically uh, introduce one uh, very small part here and then Ingfen will um, still uh, talk about the other two. We just included this one because it's our own project, but on the other hand, we felt like we, we know that a little bit more, but I don't want to talk too much about it. This is a project that we launched in 2013 which um, basically here, what I only want to mention that this is an approach which we find also by other people here in Hong Kong where basically a university teams up with uh, a charity organization, which is very typical for Hong Kong because in Hong Kong, we have this kind of very long established uh, charity organizations because there was not much welfare state, right? Uh, that's basically Caritas Hong Kong uh, uh, or uh, St. James Settlement. Um, which are um, where a lot of uh, very, uh, um, uh, how can I say, uh, engaged uh, young social workers work and they are reaching also often out to us architects and so on to, to work with them together and we are very happy to work with them. Uh, in this context, for example, we then tried also to, to link to, to various kind of uh, uh, stakeholders and for example, with characters we organized uh, on the street kind of district council elections forums with the students would present to projects for for projects and we were uh, then lucky that we could develop one of those kind of projects where basically social and and designers would work empower uh, uh, or build capacity in NGOs and also built uh, resident groups that would then uh, the friends of Sheng Fun Lane in this case who would uh, help to, to create public space. Uh, not all always successful, uh, there are a lot of hurdles, but uh, that's basically where, where we come from. Now I give the word to uh, my uh, partner to Ingfen, and maybe you can take on from here. Yeah, thank you, Henry. And I will continue from, from this, uh, this case. And the second case is the third sector organization make a difference map. This organization was founded in 2009 as one of several organizations that emerged after the 2008, 2008 financial crisis. According to its mission statement, quote, MED believes in the social potential of creativity through participatory program. We inspire and empower young people all over Asia to come up with the long-term, uh, 
to come up with innovative re responses to our time challenges, quote. It was set up as a nonprofit organization with a long-term goal of building a creative civil society. Next. Matt has launched a range of design-related projects with different plan uh, partners and funding programs. One of the signature programs is just is, is Jackie Club Make a Difference Social Lab, where citizens and civil servants co-design and experiment on so services and policies for a better public life. Next. So far, the social lab has developed four projects organized on a new model of public participation, including the laboratory lab, market lab, park lab, and healthy street lab. Each of these projects is related to a different aspect of public space. Next, as a main strategy to push for change in Hong Kong's planning practice, the social lab involves representative of Hong Kong's transport department and its Founded by the Hong Kong Jackie Club Charities Club Trust. Through cross -sec sectoral cooperation, MED put its efforts on developing new emerging design approaches beyond the community domain, thus reaching out to the level of political and economic systems. Next, what distinguishes MED from the other cases is its background. The founder and chairperson, Ida Wong, Original, originally studied law and education before becoming an influ influential district counselor for Hong Kong's one side district. The organization could leverage on Ida Wong's experience in local politics and her connection to, connections to Hong Kong's business world and community organizations. Next, besides, mass activities and influences are not limited to Hong Kong but reach different Asian countries through creating a broader network, cooperating with the organizations at different levels and launching large scale events such as the annual MAD festival. Next. The last case is so-called Morning Exercise Park located on uh -huh. Bishop Hill was initiated right. by the residents of the second May district as an informal and even illegal public open space. It is different from the above two cases in that design was deployed here under grassroots circumstances. Next. In the 1950s, a water reservoir was built on this site after a fire at the large squatter settlement in Sigan Bay. After losing its role as an emergency water supply, uh, infrastructure later, the area remains closed until residents entered the area and created a self-initiated outdoor gym in the aftermath of the 2003 SARS epidemic. Next, the main initiator was Mr. Su, Su a mechanical engineer who survived the SARS based on his knowledge as a craftsman. He started to resemble and refine exercise equipment used in hospital rehabilitation and brought it the hill to create an exercise park next. By doing so, he intended to feel, to find meaning in his post-SARS life and also to contribute to the healthier life of the community. Since then, more local residents and also people from other areas of Hong Kong have participated in this process. Next. Today, the government basically accepts the residents' informal use of this area, while the community organizes the shifts of maintenance work and, holding, uh, and hosts gatherings and activities based on volunteerism, communication software, and independent finance. Such novel cap capabilities for a self-organized community have been gradually developing in the community initiated design practice in Bishop Hill. Next, comparing this exercise park with other planned parks <laughs> in Hong Kong, we can see that the planned park often, often located in unpleasant corners of the city with a simple and kind of boring equipment. Next, appositely, 
the public space in Bishop Hill is way more comfortable with trees, easy to use equipment and vigorous community participation. Next, even during the COVID-19 pandemic, while lots of the official parks was closed due to prevent preventive policies, this informal public outdoor space has become much more popular. While the government discovered the underground structure of the reservoir last year, it brought lots of attention from the public on the debate of heritage preservation, as well as the value of the nearby informal public space. Next. Based on this table, we can tell some similarities and differences between the three cases, particularly in the case of a magic carp and a map, some negotiations and compromises with government sectors happened while they cooperated with the governmental sectors and their funds. Only the development of a Bishop Hill's public space starts from insurgent activities, which demonstrates how a successful design practice can be cultivated by grassroots. As an informal public outdoor space, the exercise park in Bishop Hill was continuing during the pandemic, while most of the activities were halted in the other cases. Next, as a conclusion, uh, through analysis of these cases, we found some valued points that indicate effective models of incorporating novel public space design approaches to Hong Kong society. This can be developed to further projects of public space design in both Hong Kong and greater Bay Area communities. And I probably just will stop here because I won't uh, worry about the time limit. And so I don't, I won't go to your detail, but we can, I mean, discuss a lot later in our discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was really, really fascinating and um, really gives us a sense of the different kinds of the texture. So 